you need to build a CMS project and you can pick from GraphQL or REST API. Which one is better? Let's find out. Now, GraphQL was developed originally by Facebook in 2012 and publicly released in 2015. Now, as Facebook's mobile and applications grew, they faced challenges with traditional REST API, which resulted in overfetching or underfetching of data. So overfetching of data occurs when a client retrieves more information from a server than it actually needs, resulting in weighted resource and slow performance. Underfetching happens when a client doesn't receive all the data required in a single request, leading to additional requests and increased network latency to fetch the missing information. Now, from my experience, when I'm building CMS project, these aren't the typical problems that I initially bump into. Now, when I think of a CMS project, I tend to think of issues like content governance, accessibility, responsive design, and data migration issues. And these types of problems are going to exist regardless if I use REST or GraphQL. Now, when you go online, you're going to find way more articles recommending GraphQL compared to REST API. However, I call bullshit and let's see why. First, let's consider five reasons why you'd use GraphQL. Now, first up, you have efficiency. Because GraphQL allows you to request exactly the data you need, the data in transit is reduced. Secondly, because you have more control over how you get data in your front end, it should be easier to implement features in the future. The next point is that GraphQL uses a single endpoint. Now, if you need to work on a project which combines data from loads of APIs, trying to deal with multiple URLs is a pain and having a single endpoint is going to be much more efficient. The next point is that GraphQL can remove the need for API versioning. Because you can update GraphQL without breaking existing queries, this can provide a lot more flexibility. And the final point is that you can update your GraphQL layer in real time. And this can be really handy if you need to build chat apps, notifications, and features of that ilk. That covers the main benefits of using GraphQL. Now, I want you to ask yourself one single question. How many times when you've been creating a CMS project have you really bumped into those limits? And in order to answer this question, we need to start thinking about how we model content within the CMS itself. Now, I've got Umbraco CMS up in front of us, and it doesn't really make a difference which CMS that you use. Now, the steps to allow content editors to add content inside of the CMS will be based on something like a content model, a template, whatever the terminology for your CMS of choice is. Now, within Umbraco, I can do document types. I can create a brand new document type. And then from here, I can add properties. So this property might be you know, my title. And then from here, I might select a text box. Now, I automatically assume that you're not a complete num nuts. I mean, you're watching this channel after all, so you must be a legend. And I have faith that you're going to be able to take your website designs and you'll be able to figure out what properties and models are required in order to render that page. And the output from this content modeling exercise will be a CMS that contains a selection of well-designed templates. This means that when you need to render a page, you're not going to have to worry about hundreds of unused properties being returned within your response. The side effect of good content modeling is that you won't need to deal with excessive API overfetching issues. Now, a second consideration you need to think about are referencing. If you need to define models that reference other blocks or pages, this data might not get returned within a default REST API call. Now, from my experience, the good news is that most CMSs that use REST APIs and SDKs will have a flag to return related data within the same query. So this can also negate the underfetching issues you might encounter. And it's for these reasons I struggle to see the benefits of using GraphQL in a brochureware website. Now, this does not definitely mean that GraphQL is useless for websites. One area where GraphQL is definitely beneficial is a e-commerce website. Now, let's say within your architecture, you have an e-commerce tool, a CMS, and a customer data platform in order to store your information. Being able to write a single GraphQL query that fetches all the data required to render, say, a My Account page 
is going to be a better route. Using REST, you might need to make multiple queries just to get the data you need to render that page. So for example, you might need to make a call to get account information, one to get order information, another to get multiple product information, and another one to CMS to get all the content for the page. And this is where the age old axiom of picking the right tool for the job comes into play. And another factor in the REST API versus GraphQL debate is the type of rendering that your website uses. Now, nowadays, a lot of sites make use of static site generation. And when you use static site generation to render your pages, you don't need to worry about the initial page performance quite so much. Because when pages are generated on demand at compile time, a few extra milliseconds here or there isn't going to impact any of your core page vitals. We are now on a roll and the next point I want to bring up is around SDK support. So pretty much every single one of the headless CMS vendors in the marketplace today has an SDK that wraps their REST API. So on the screen, you can see that we've got the content for one from NPM. There's one for story block and there's one for content stack and installing these things as simple as doing something like an NPM install content form. Now, after you've got one of these patches installed, configuring up and getting access to information from it is pretty simple. Normally, you provide an access token, maybe an environment name, maybe the ID or the URL of the page you want to query, and everything's taken care of for you. No need to install additional packages or anything like that. And this takes us to our next really important point. CMS vendors don't provide SDKs for GraphQL. When you go the GraphQL route in a CMS, it will be left up to you to get everything working yourself. Now, for JavaScript projects, you'll likely end up installing Apollo as a client to talk to GraphQL. Now, Apollo will definitely hide and take away some of the complexities of implementing a GraphQL server for you. However, it's definitely not a simple package and it's not trivial to master. Also, it's not going to solve every single one of your problems for you. For instance, let's take this example. On the screen, you can see a Reddit of someone complaining about caching. Now, caching and performance are definitely a touchy subject that comes up with teams who use GraphQL. Now, as caching is built into the HTTP specification, which obviously REST APIs are able to leverage, GraphQL doesn't follow the same route because it doesn't use the HTTP spec and instead it uses a single endpoint It's left up to the developer to ensure caching is implemented correctly for non mutable queries. Now, just in case you haven't come across the term non mutable, a non mutable query is basically a database operation that exclusively retrieves information without making any changes to the underlying data set. So basically in plain talk, a read only call. Now being realistic in most CMS brochureware websites, most of your calls are going to be read only anyway. So you don't really need to worry about this, but you know, it could be a fact to consider. Now, there is also a second potential issue with GraphQL, and that is the N plus one problem. And you might be there thinking, what the hell is this N plus one problem? So basically, it's a database query issue, basically where you're trying to fetch a list of entities which requires N additional queries to get all the related data for each entity. Now, what can happen is that for each entity, you're going to make a separate database call, which can be very, very inefficient. Now, there are additional tools that you can store to help mitigate this performance issue. Now, if you're using Node, you can use something like Prisma, and that can help deal with the N plus one problem. However, again, you're adding extra complexity to the stack by installing yet more tools. Now, my intention of recording this video isn't just to knock GraphQL or to say it's naff. It definitely isn't. I've implemented GraphQL in API layer projects and gateway projects, and it's been much easier compared to having to deal with a bunch of APIs that I didn't want to deal with. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the perfect technology choice for every single CMS project. And what I'm hoping you're getting from this is that just because a CMS vendor offers GraphQL, that doesn't mean it should probably be your default option.
Now, honestly, for me, for most CMS projects, my default option is to use REST API. And then only if I need the extra benefits of GraphQL, that I actually go down the GraphQL route. Otherwise, sticking with REST API, sticking with an SDK, sticking with the caching, all of that good stuff is typically a little bit easier on a CMS project. Now, anyway, what do I know? I'm just some dude on the internet, but I hope this makes you think about the pros and the cons of picking GraphQL. Now, if you do want to learn more about CMS, I've created a bunch of CMS videos, so don't forget to smash on the subscribe button. And if you have enjoyed this video, click like as well. Now, if you want to see more of my videos so you can learn more about some website development, then I've created a brilliant video, which is called the best Visual Studio Code extensions. It goes through a bunch of really useful extensions, the link of which is on the screen right now. So click on that. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day wherever you are. Until next Sunday, happy coding.